I'm Craig Robinson, and you're watching Real Black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Okay. I don't so. know where that came from either. Take your panties off. Lights, camera, action, it's on. New black film revolution born. Uber shakers, big and little filmmakers. Let's make a movie today, see where it take us. Halle Berry, Denzel, and Jamie. Taryn Star with Mike D and Spike Lee. Brand new filmmaker born every day. Put a camera in his hand and let him lead the way. Let me get an Oscar, let me get an Emmy. Real black woke up the filmmaker Emmy. Whether digital, 8 millimeter, 35. Let's make the movies that can open the eyes. Let's tell the stories that need to be. Funny enough, it's not that different at all. Um, I always laugh with Michael and tell him he's a lot like Spike in his style of directing. Um, the one thing I can say about Michael and Spike that kind of puts them in the same realm is they do not suffer fools well. And if you come to set unprepared, if you come to set and you're not ready, they'll move on and have, find someone who is ready. Working with Michael was, I mean, it was like being on a, a missile. I mean, you step on set and it's the, we would do, you know, 20, 30 setups a day. You know, and the same thing with Spike. I mean, you know, when we were doing She Hate Me, literally there were times when he would cover a scene from seven different angles before lunch. I mean, it was, it was just, you, you have to be prepared for anything. It was time to push myself harder. Oh, there you go, yes. Otherwise, I was looking at another 40 years of wearing sweatpants to work. Mr. Dobble, are you currently using steroids? I think they messed me up. Don't worry, it's what we specialize in here. I'm a self-made man. I made a lot of money. Maybe yourself ought to spend some of it on a salad. You know who invented salad? Poor people. Hey, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black, and today we have the Great opportunity to be with Mr. Anthony Mackey, the star of the new movie, Pain and Gain. Hey, thanks for coming back to Philly. Thank you for having me, man, I appreciate it. Michael Bay, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Mark Wahlberg, mm -hmm. tell us about the movie. Um, in a nutshell, it's, it's a true story. It's uh, based on these three bodybuilders who want to achieve the American dream. So they kidnap, extort, and <laughs> murder the rich guys they're training at their gym. Okay, that's so ironic. And, <laughs> um, and, you know, it's based on a true story. Right. But, you know, and it's gotten some criticism from some of the victims' families. I mean, the, this played for laughs, sort of. Right. I mean, what's your take on that? Well, the idea is, you know, none of them have seen the movie. You know, and I, I respect and understand their... Uh, reactions 100%. Uh, if it was my family member, I would probably feel the same way. But, you know, it's hard to criticize or judge a movie from a commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, the movie's a lot of fun. It's entertaining. What Michael has done, I feel, with this movie is dealt with this story and subject matter as tastefully as it can be dealt with. And, you know, it's about the situation. It's about what these guys did and how ridiculous it was. And the victims just kind of became byproducts of that. In no way, shape, or form do we point fingers at the victims and laugh or say this happened because they brought this on themselves. You know, no, they're still victims and we, we show that. Right, right. So what attracted you to the role? 100% uh, the character. I had never seen or read a movie like this in my life. And I definitely hadn't been offered a movie like this. So when I read uh, the character, Adrian Dorble, you know, I was just intrigued by that idea of his ability to justify the heinous acts that they commit. You know, I feel like there's so many things as actors that we get to do that we kind of overlook and, you know, make light of. But this is an experience and an opportunity. I wanted to really delve into it and see how far I could go with it. Right, and, and you know, a lot of our viewers are fans from way back. You yeah, know, we're talking yeah. about like Eight Mile, She Hate Me. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you've been at this for a while. I mean, yeah. where do you feel you are at this point in your career? Uh, I've, I mean, in my career, well, I feel like I'm at a point where I can call it a career. 
Okay. You know, which is a huge milestone for me. Um, you know, a lot, my teacher always used to say, anyone can get a job. You know, anyone can go into the business and get one job and live and be happy. But it takes a special artist to make it a career. So, you know, I, I feel like I'm still at that midway level of the beginning. You know, Sam Jackson told me, he said, your career starts here, it goes to here, and it ends here. And I feel like I'm kind of right there. Okay. You know? No, so, I definitely feel that. Yeah. I definitely feel that. And it's really cool. It seems like you, you're in a position where you can do these big budget Hollywood films, mm -hmm. but then still have time to do stuff that's more passionate for yourself definitely I um, you know I'm I'm just lucky like my next movie is uh, Captain America and then after that in September my friend Frankie Flowers who directed Haven this movie I did we wrote a movie together and we're doing it in September we got the money and you know we're gonna be shooting it in September so it's a small little low budget indie drama that we did and um, you know it's cool to be able to do both last last final thoughts is, is what, what do people take away from painting game um, you know, I want people to watch the movie and come away with the idea that there's a difference between hunger and greed. Um, as a country, we should be hungry. You know, we should be steadfast in the idea that we deserve whatever we want. You know, we, there should be the idea that as Americans, if we work hard, we should be compensated fairly. But now what we've come to is work as little as you can to get as much as you can and that's where the greed comes in you know this person has a nice house so i i don't want to go and work hard and get my own house i want their house you know and i think that has kind of been our demise with the housing boom with the real estate boom you know even with the you know the dot-com bubble i feel like at some point in time we're going to have to get back to the idea of working to achieve our own greatness very well said. I mean, that's that's right where we're at yeah. right now with Pain and Gain. And, you know, thanks again for having us on. No, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Real Black TV, Anthony Mackey. Real Black. You said no violence. And I meant it when I said it, I swear to God. I cannot kill. Duly noted. Look, when this is over, we'll all go camping. All right? Okay. I love reading, and so I would read books, and then I would like adapt some of them to screenplays, and most of them were awful. Like just, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, um, but it didn't matter. You know, it was I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I I felt socially awkward. I was in my room a lot, and writing storytelling was a way for me to was a way for me to say and do the things that I've always wanted to do but didn't was a way for me to approach the cute guy I had a crush on, was a way for me to express the pain and the embarrassment and the insecurities and the triumphs and the joys that I felt and hide behind my characters. I think it's really interesting with this film because you have this all black cast, right? And I think that in this country, when you see that, a lot of times it's, it's, it could be kind of categorizing this kind of urban genre, but that this film is can't be that. <laughs> it can't. <laughs> We're in Alaska. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck. Did you go back to Africa this for a minute? <laughs> you know you gotta talk in a language she understands. Like my like, like, <laughs> Fuck I, I you. <laughs> Just another nigga like you. You ain't no nigga, man. Shit, your parents are engineers and professors and shit, man. You ain't no nigga. Let me get ahead of that. Alaska Land is a story about a young Nigerian American uh, Alaskan male, Chukuma, who is kind of trying to live up to these kind of stereotypical expectations of what it means to be a black American male. And in doing so, he distances himself from his family and his sister. And when the parents pass on an unfortunate accident, his younger sister is forced to go back to Nigeria to live with the dad's younger brother while he decides to stay in Fairbanks, Alaska. And they become estranged for a couple years. And during a near fatal incident that Chukuma is involved in, his sister and the uncle come back into his life. So the majority of the story then becomes his, his kind of journey of redemption and being this son and brother that he never was and really defining for himself what it means to be a Nigerian 
American male in Alaska. So there's the, the obvious like inspiration. I'm, I'm was born in Nigeria and grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska, and growing up, I never thought of that as a anything particularly unusual and it wasn't until graduate school in film school where a colleague of mine just stopped me dead in my tracks when he was when he was shocked at how uh, at, at, at how strange it was to him that I'm this Nigerian Alaskan female and he told me that should be your first feature film like you have to share that experience with people and he really got me thinking and I, growing up I've always um, struggled with these kind of like uh, this very unique space, right, of being Nigerian American, right, of not, um, of, of having kind of both cultures infused in me and having to kind of juggle both of them and not really feeling authentically one or the other. And it, it's been painful, it's been um, exciting, and it's, it's definitely helped to define who I was. And I always knew that I wanted to explore that in film. My name is Chinoya Chuku. Out of all my siblings, I think I have the most difficult name to pronounce. My name already makes me stand out, and I think that when you when you're growing up, you just want to belong. We went to Nigeria all the time, every other year, and I felt insecure because I have an American accent. I'm not completely fluent in my native language, and my entire being is, 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 is very Americanized in some respects. But at the same time, spiritually, and even in a lot of ways, culturally, I still identified with this, with this group of people. And then I look, and, and, I, and I'm with my black American counterparts, and particularly it happened when I started, when I started dating, and, and I would have a lot of cultural confrontations with a lot of black American men I would date. Um, and they were expressing some of the same ignorances um, that my non-black counterparts would. And so I just felt lost. And it wasn't until I met other Nigerian Americans and first generation um, young people that I recognize I'm not alone. And I started gravitating to, towards that kind of group. And then it just became, as I got older and left college, it just became, I am who I am. And I think that that's essentially the place that Chukuma, in some respects, has to reach, right? He is who he is, you know? And being an Alaskan, Nigerian, American doesn't mean just one thing. It means something for him which is something different for his sister, which is something different for me. I first want people to walk away from watching Alaska Land really feeling and thinking that it was a good story. I want them to have an emotional reaction to the film that is, um, that's preferably based in a connection that they had with one or more of the characters. I want them to be able to see themselves in these characters and the story, no matter what their background is. I want, I want people to, I want people to really feel like they had an intense experience with a, in a world or with a world that they've never, they've probably never been exposed to and with, with a perspective that's never been told on screen. I want people walking away really feeling that they had an experience. I guess I just think about if I would have seen certain stories growing up, my life would have been so much um, easier to deal with. I'm coming over to Why are we even having this conversation right now? Hello? 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 Dead. Dead? Dead! Hello, my name is Chinoya Chuku, the writer and director of the upcoming feature film Alaska Land, and you are watching Real Black. I'm, I'm not going to say you're bigger than me because I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm probably bigger than you. Really? Yeah, I'm bigger than a lot of people. They don't, they don't expect it. They, they always think I'm short for some reason. People are like, oh, you're much taller in person. 
Oh, you've been looking at me in the TV, so, you know. <laughs> so I know you're going to be a star. Thank you, sir. Movie. Thank you very much. And we're sitting here today in the presence of Craig Robinson, the star of the new movie, Peoples. Grace, it's been a year. It's time I met your folks. We have been through this, Daddy. would pick you apart. Share the chocolate Kennedys. What are you doing here? I thought Saturday was the big proposal day. She can't make a move without daddy, you know? Look, you are just as good as him. I mean, maybe not as good, because he's a federal judge, but, you know? Every guy has an idea. You know, maybe I should just go out there to propose in front of everybody. Of how meeting the family should go. Can we help you? <laughs> I'm waiting. This isn't it. <laughs> Don't run. You're going to set off his instinct to mate. <laughs> well, now you're having puppies. Tell us a little bit about the film. I play Wade Walker. He uh, is deeply in love with his girlfriend, Grace Peoples, played by Kerry Washington. And uh, she won't let him meet his family, mainly because her father, Judge Virgil Peoples, played by Dave Allen Greer, he's not trying to have anybody in his family he, uh, uh, who he doesn't approve of. And nobody wins his approval. Nobody's good enough for his daughter. And so, you know, I, I kind of go down there to surprise Grace and the family to their vacation house in Sag Harbor, and it doesn't go quite like I, I planned it to. This gentleman just washed ashore, and he says he knows you. Yes, this is Wade Walker, everybody. Guilty. Yeah, and uh, he's my friend. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we are in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. A relationship? Dad, I'm sure I mentioned I was seeing a Wade. No, no, I, I don't remember that. This is your first time all Peoples. Um... Yes. It's, uh, it's very exciting. It's, um, and and it's, it's, the response to the film has been getting, you know, going to these screenings has been overwhelming. It's, it's, uh, it's doing my heart so good because we, you know, we felt like we were making a... a a fun special movie. And we thought it was funny, and, and uh, but, you know, you never know till you roll it out there. And now people have been very positive, so it's, it feels great. No, it's great. No, Real Black members had a chance to see the movie the other day. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's like the first movie produced by Tyler Perry that he can direct. Yeah, Tina Gordon Chisholm wrote it and directed it, and Tyler has produced it and put put his shine on. He used the name. To, to shine on us, to you know, to uh, lift us up and get people to come in and check it out, and it's, it's we couldn't be more honored or more humbled. Tyler Perry is Tyler Perry, so you know, thank you, sir. No, no doubt. So, and I mean, what was cool? Like, there's music in the film, and your background is music, right? Yes. The uh, once I got attached to it, Tina was like, "Oh well, we're gonna make Wade a musician," um, and that, that offered some some. You know, some extra play because now you got the song "Speak It, Don't Leak It." Well, Wade's character—he, he's a, he call, a a counselor with a K, so he he's not, you know, certified to counsel children, but he takes it upon himself to counsel them through music. "Speak It, Don't Leak It" is a song about you know kids uh, speak out your problems, don't don't internalize them because in turn you might pee on yourself. Exactly. Speak it, or don't leak it, don't keep your feelings secret. Say it, don't spray it, that's how the big kids play it. Yeah, you're gonna see that in the film. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> We've seen you come up like the last 10 years. You've been in some of the top comedies of, of the last decade, and now you're starring in one. Um, is there anything that you wish, now that you, you're here and you're doing this, that you would have known then that you know now? No, um, I, was, I was naive enough to think I could could swim to this to to this level, and I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, it's all been it's all been like uh, even even the way that the timing of this movie, you know, had it come out when they first said it was gonna come out, uh, it was before Scandal, you know, and all this other stuff. So so the, the fact that we got Carrie's fans and all these. Gladiators, she calls her. Uh, what's up? Shout out to the Gladiators uh, and uh, and Office fans. You know, uh, shout out to the Office fans. What's up? So, you know, all these people coming out. You know, to check it out. The timing couldn't be more crucial or better. So it's it's it's. 
I don't get in the way of it. I just I let my, my, my talent uh, uh, dictate where I'm going. I don't just go, oh, man, if I'd have done this this way or this that way, I kind of let stuff go and, and move to the next thing. Okay. So, but, I mean, it has been a long, hard-fought race to get. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Uh, did, was that, did you seek out to do this? or was this, uh, I definitely had a vision um, uh, uh, of, of greatness, a vision of success. And I think in order to, to get to certain levels, you, you have to visualize it first and, uh, you know, make a, make a strong plan. And at some point, the dreams and the goals mixed in with life. And I started living these, these things like, you know, like uh, uh, leading a movie, you know, I, I visualized it and, and wanted it. And, um, and, and here it is. Fantastic. Well, I mean, people. But it didn't come without its sacrifices, of course. Oh no. More like, mm, movie, bam. You know, it was uh, a lot of no's, a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, relationships built, a lot of work going in, and you know, going in and doing solid work. But uh, in the meaning between, here it is. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I think you know, hard work definitely pays off. I mean, we've been fans f since Hot Tub Time Machine, thank you, Pineapple Express, Office, all that stuff. So it's definitely your time. And we're glad to share it with you on Real Black TV. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Appreciate you getting the word out. Appreciate your fans, you know. And uh, okay, so we have. Two. Are we gonna sing a duet? Thankful I am to be here with you. You raised a remarkable woman. <laughs> oh, not my baby Grace. People. So let's say that one day you arrive at your home. It has been a long day during which you have worked no less than 12 consecutive hours. However, this particular day, a young lady has told you that she is coming to be in your company. So as you empty your pockets and begin to get settled, you see that she has telephoned you. Of course, you telephone her back. She tells you that she has just arrived at her own home and won't be coming to yours tonight. At that moment, given the circumstances, how would you feel? What's up, everybody? This is Lyra Speck for Real Black, and we're at the Philadelphia Film Festival with Terrence Nance, artist who made an oversimplification of her beauty. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So, I really want to just get right into an oversimplification of her beauty. It's a very dense and, in my words, beautiful film um, that there's so much to unpack. Um, the subject matter, the approach, uh, the way it was shot, the different mediums. What was the greater vision behind putting, what was the process behind putting a film like this together? Um, well, the experience was the process in a lot of ways. Like, I had a situation with a woman who <laughs> was complex and I felt like you know, we were both at a space in our lives that was ambiguous, or, or the space we were at was typified by ambiguity, you know. We weren't students, we weren't professional. I was a student, actually, and, mm. you know, we weren't really entirely within our identities yet, you know. And I think that that space has become elongated in a Western culture, you know. Mm. That, I guess, not even extended adolescence, but that extended pre-adulthood, <laughs> you know, mm. that, that I think we all go through after after college and before we kind of find whatever it is we settle settle into, and you know it's just fertile ground for uh, a lot of angst and anxiety, but also a lot of beauty and you know kind of wondering and possibilities that existed within our relationship that I wanted to express in a in a piece. Yeah. Um, describe the different mediums you used and and why it was so important to not just approach it in a linear sense. Well, I guess the, the easiest thing to say is it just wasn't natural for me to do that. I, I never had a kind of conscious moment of denying anything. Like, I don't want it to be like this linear. I didn't have that moment. I just sort of laid it on the paper, and that's just what it was, and I never questioned that. And I think whereas it seems like it stands against a lot of traditions in cinema, um, it doesn't really, you know, in, in my attitude in making it wasn't that. I wasn't standing against anything or responding to anything, really. I was just putting it out there how it seemed most natural to me. Um, and that includes including a lot of different ways of making images uh, or, you know, a lot of different ways of capturing what the content of our relationship was. Nice. 
So at times it even seemed kind of poetic. Um, talk about some of your other artistic gifts and your artistic beginnings that helped to lend themselves to uh, an oversimplification of her beauty. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was structuring it like a blues song. You know, I, I like writing songs a lot and I kind of come from music. And also the, the film is going to come out with an album of songs that are associated with that time in my life. And that's why there's so much repetition, because songs have choruses, and I wanted that sort of structural element to be in there. Less so I wanted it to be in there, but I just built it in there when I wrote it, because mm -hmm. I knew how to write songs. I didn't really know how to write, write a movie at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just what came most natural to me. Um, and yeah, after this movie and working on the music, I'm definitely going to continue to do that and work with sound a lot. And um, also just sort of moving outside of myself, um, Thematically, you know, I kind of was making this movie in the fine art context. You know, I was at art school when I started the movie. Right. I wasn't really in a filmmaking context. And I think, you know, moving forward, I'm definitely going to... I thought that this was, this movie would be kind of more in museums and galleries when mm -hmm. I was making it, but mm -hmm. that hasn't been how it worked out. So uh, I think that's interesting. I'll probably move back into that space, too. Yeah. So you mentioned you didn't really have a lot of experience with filmmaking. What what said, I'll take this, I'll take up the responsibility, I have the audacity to say, I'm just going to make a film, especially as a non-film major and as a not uh, being focused in film at the time? Well, it was an emotional experience for me. It was a, it had nothing to do with who I thought I was as an artist or a mm -hmm. filmmaker. It, it just had to do with how I felt about her. So it was like my feelings for her empowered me to do whatever I was going to do, you know, mm -hmm. if it was a... If I was going to make a dance number or something, I would have done that. <laughs> but it was just, you know, and I think in general, my way, my philosophy about all those types of things is it doesn't really matter what you are or what you're trained to do. It just, what are you going to make next? And that's what I constantly ask myself when people ask me about, oh, you do all these things. I kind of don't. You were doing this to show her how you feel, to testify to the size and intensity of these feelings. She will see the film. Smile. This effective. You have oversimplified her beauty. My name is Terrence Nance. The name of my film is An Oversimplification of Her Beauty, and you are watching Real Black. Sugar, I surrender. 